if you were to define like what your your core strengths are, besides just you know being a good manager, but is it marketing a core one of your core strengths? Would you say? I would say what offsets me from any of my competitors, which my competitors they're they're no bigger than fifteen twenty thousand square feet, and they're you know a lot, but. I would say humanizing our brand and getting in front of the camera, live streams on a consistent basis and connecting with our avatar, almost as what you would see through uh, YouTubers that have been around a long time. We've embodied kind of a culture where people know exactly what we're doing um, and they get excited about new product releases. Uh, there's a private group that's not a top tier reward platform. It's called uh, Redline a VIP Group. And that's our customer focus group. Companies pay millions of dollars to have a focus group before we launch products. We'll test it in the VIP group, get consumer feedback, and then figure out if we want to put paid traffic behind it. And we'll also test like color variations. We'll test new products, um, new t-shirts that come out. We're testing before we pay. And they're really our focus group. Now they're embodied to feel like, holy, sh holy shit, like he picked my color that I want. He picked the product that I wanted. I, I'm going to support that because I really wanted it and he picked what I wanted. So we're listening. It doesn't matter what I think looks good. We're really in touch with our consumer. How, and how do you come up with ideas for new products? Is there, is there some sort of, uh, is there like a think tank? Is just, just, who's the idea person? Is it you? You just come up with ideas for new products? Or do you ask your customer base, hey, what, what would, you, hey, would you like me to, what would you want me to make? Is, that, is it that, you know, customer is the best idea? So? Yes, 100%. We, we, we listen and we ask, we're not afraid to ask for, you know, like we launch $2 Tuesday, every Tuesday we release a product, it's only $2. And we do that to collect data through SMS. And so that's been a massive prospect uh, scale for us. So we could drive traffic and, you know, on Tuesdays, it's, it's incredible. When we do a text message, um, we'll have uh, 10,000, 12,000 people live within, you know, a couple minutes on our website. So we're flooding the traffic to our website. Now it's, it's more of like a top of funnel strategy just for traffic in general to get there so we can remarket. It's not extremely profitable, but when you look past the bigger picture, it helps us tremendously. So I think it's just, um, as a marketer, I've gotten more comfortable being uncomfortable and kind of trusting the process and looking at things holistically different. So I'll look at uh, market ad spend to top line revenue, and then I'll look at key metrics per channel. Uh, so I'll look at key indicators to know that this, this should be scaling, this shouldn't be scaling, we should turn that off. Um, but I, I am, I'm, I'm okay with being less uh, return on ad spend over on this channel, knowing that my top line is where it needs to be on a market ad spend. Um, so I'm, I'm not afraid to scale. Like I've, I'm sure just like you, I've got a Centurion black card. So it's literally... I've got no caps with my media buyers. Um, as long as we're hitting metrics, we just need to keep pushing. And as long as we're not backlogged on the fulfillment distribution side. What's the biggest error that you've made so far in, in, in this journey with this business? Is anything you said, wow, this is what a lesson I, I mean, I, cause I think that, you know, the mistakes, I make a lot of them myself. I, I, and I always learn from them, hopefully. Um, what, do you, what are the biggest mistakes, errors that you've made uh, here that have given you great, you know, sort of, you know, um, lessons that have allowed you to come back even stronger? Uh, lessons learned for me is not biting off more than I can chew and, and trying to not let down my consumers. The, the first three years as a business, we were delinquent on uh, Christmas gifts. And so now I look like I'm the Grinch. And so um, that, that was extremely hard, especially because I operate, I told you my, my core value is integrity. Um, mm. not having redundancies in place on certain key pieces of equipment because I simply just don't know. And we didn't have staffing in the past that could really think if this goes down, what are my redundancies? Sure. And so now we're, we're building an extremely strong foundation. And so I feel so much more comfortable going into this year's, you know, top uh, busy season than I've ever felt. But I would say just um, it's hard to decline an ad that's performing extremely well. Um, to know that this could be a challenge to get this out the door. So if I'm being very vulnerable and open, that's been a challenge is just mentally saying, okay, even though I'm going to make a lot of money here, I've got to turn it off or I've got to decline it uh, because of that balance. Because we can have more orders coming in than our, what we can carry and what we can actually ship, even in you know, 100,000 square feet. So hmm. so I, I think when it comes to, to that, that, that 
notion of having integrity. I, I don't think it's about whether you deliver or not. Obviously, you want to deliver. I think it's more was your intention to deliver. In other words, you can't if you, if you make a mistake and things don't go your way, you can't fault yourself and beat yourself up. I think the problem is when people do things knowing they have no way to deliver and they just do it to try to generate some money and noise. But it, it sounds like that you had every intention of doing what you said you were going to do. It just things didn't work out the way. So I don't think that really affects your integrity at all. What do you think about that? You agree with that? A hundred percent.